Hi everyone, welcome back to Math 301, Introduction to Combinatorial Theory. And today we're talking about section 6.5, derangements. So what is a derangement? Let's say you have a word, for instance, uh, uh, in the math book, we use the word math. You want to rearrange or permute the letters so that uh, no letter is in its correct spot. So uh, one thing you can see is that if you have only one letter, then there's no way to do this. Because if you have only one letter, then any rearrangement has that letter in the, the correct spot. And so the number of derangements, D1, is 0. Let's say we use the word vo. Then the only derangement of vo is OV. And so the number of derangements is on um, two letters is D2, which is one. Uh, let's say we work with the word toe. Well, usually there are six permutations of toe, but it turns out that four of those have a letter in the correct spot. And so the only ones that are left are OET and ETO. So the number of derangements on three letters is two. And so let's um, do one more example with the word vote. Uh, I really encourage you all to vote. And uh, these are four letters. And now we need to be a little more systematic to count these all, because it would be really easy to miss one. So we're going to look at where the V ends up. Well, it can't end up in the first spot, because every letter has to be in the wrong spot. And so the only options are that the V could end up in the second spot, or the third spot, or the fourth spot. So then we have two cases. It could be that V switched or had a transposition with one other letter. So for instance, if V and O switched places, then we would start with OV. And then there's not much choice for what's going on. We would have to make the E and the T switch places also. If V switched with the third letter, then that would be a T at the beginning and a V in the third letter. And then we would have to switch the O and the E. And if the V ended up in the fourth place after switching with E, then we would have also had to switch the O and the T. So that's one possibility. The other possibility is that V did not switch with the seeth letter. So what that means is then, let's look at this case where C is two. That means that the V has to be in the second spot. And then in the first spot, you can't have O. Also, in the third spot, you can't have T. And in the fourth spot, you can't have E. So there are three spots, and in each of the spots, there's exactly one letter that it can't be. And so if you work out um, the options, you're left with uh, this one and this one. So the thing to notice here is that D4, uh, which turns out it turns out that D4 is, is 9. So it turns out that D4 is, is 9, but the way we want to think about that number 9, how did we find that number 9? Well, we had three options for C, and then uh, in the transposition case, we had one option, and in the not a transposition case, we had two options. And so that is 3 times 3, which is 9. But another thing to notice is that this, this number 2 and this number 1 they were the previous two values in the sequence of the number of derangements. And let's think about why that might, might be, because we want to prove this general recurrence relation that dn is n minus 1 times the number of derangements on n minus 1 letters plus the number of derangements on n minus 2 letters. Now let's think why that is. Well, the n minus 1 that counts for um, 
the number of choices of C. This here was in the, the DN minus two is the transposition case because if, if two of the letters switch spaces, then we have N minus two letters left and none of them can be in the correct spot. And so that's exactly counted by D N minus two. And this D N minus one, where did that come from? Well, it came from the V being in the correct spot and we have N minus one letters left. And each one is eliminated from one spot. Now the reason that each one can't be in one spot is different for different letters. So for example, in this case where C is two, we couldn't put the O here because that would have been case one, the transposition of O and V. So the reason we couldn't put an O here was because we're in case two. Whereas the reason that we can't put a T in the third spot is because we want a derangement. And the reason we can't put an E in the fourth spot is because we want a derangement. So the reason why each, um, uh, maybe I should say this a little bit better. Maybe I should have said each spot um, can't have, yeah, maybe I didn't say this right. Uh, each spot um, has n minus n minus one choices would be a better way of saying that. So um, each so each spot out of the n minus one spots has n minus two options. Okay, and that's the same scenario that we had for the number of derangements on n minus one letters. Okay, so let's let's move on to talking about fun facts about uh, the number of derangements. Where did it go? So one fun fact about the number of derangements is that dn is the closest integer to n factorial over e, where e is the, uh, the very special transcendental number, 2.71 and so on and so forth. So for example, when n is two, two factorial over e is 0.736, and the closest integer to that is one. When n is 3, 3 factorial over e is 2.207. That's closest to the integer 2. And when n is 4, 24 over e is 8.829. That's closest to the integer 9. So that seems like really unusual why dn should be this closest number to n factorial over e. But the reason is because of a big theorem about these derangement numbers, which is that the number dn equals n factorial times one minus one over one factorial plus one over two factorial minus one over three factorial, all the way up to either positive or negative one over n factorial. Now, if you really wanna prove this theorem about the number of derangements, you can use the inclusion exclusion principle, or you can do a, um, a harder proof using I think, generating functions. So there are lots of ways of proving this, but we're not gonna do that. But I just wanted to show where that number E came up from. If you remember back in calculus, we had something called the Taylor series. And it turns out the Taylor series for e to the x is one plus one over one factorial times x plus one over two factorial times x squared plus one over three factorial x cubed. And that goes on forever. 
And so if you plug in x equals minus one, you then get an alternating sum, one minus one over one factorial, plus one over two factorial, minus one over three factorial. And this, this Taylor series converges extremely fast. So uh, what that means is that one over e is very close to the, the first number, of, um, very close to any truncation of this infinite series. And so in particular, this, this theorem here shows that we're looking at the, the first um, terms, the terms up to the one divided by n factorial. And so this, this number here is very, very close to one over e. Okay, so that's fun fact. Now let's um, look a little bit more at recurrence relations. So it turns out there are in fact two recurrence relations for the number of derangements. Remember that dn is the number of permutations on n, um, on the numbers one through n, so that no number is in the correct spot. And we already showed this recurrence relation for dn, which is that it's n minus one times the sum of the previous two values of the sequence. Here is a second recurrence relation for dn, which is that dn is n times dn minus one plus minus one to the n. One thing that's nice about this second recurrence relation is it's telling us that to get from dn minus one to dn, you're pretty much multiplying by n and then just adding or subtracting one. And let's just see an example of how that second recurrence relation would, would work out. Let's say we were trying to find a d4. This would say that it is four times d3 and then plus minus one to the fourth. And we already figured out that d3 was two. And so this shows that d4 is four times two plus one, which is nine. Okay, so this second recurrence relation is in some ways a little bit nicer than the first recurrence relation. And what we can do is we can prove b using induction on n and the fact that A is true. We've already shown that A is true for all um, natural numbers uh, n, which are greater than or equal to, let's say three. So for our base case, we're gonna take n being two, and we just check that, that D2 does equal two times D1 plus minus one squared. And now to do this inductive proof, we're gonna write out what is the inductive hypothesis B for the index n minus one? So that is D n minus one is n minus one times D n minus two plus minus one to the n minus one. And so that's what we're gonna suppose. We're gonna suppose that um, D n minus one equals this. And what we wanna do is we wanna show statement B. So, so what we're doing is we're, we're, um, we're assuming um, that B is true at index N minus one, and we're using that to show that B is true at index N. And this is sort of a weird notation here, but we're using A in order to, to show that. So from this um, supposed statement, we can solve for this term. We're gonna do that by just moving the other term to the other side. So n minus one, dn minus two, is dn minus one minus minus one to the n minus one. So remember that when we take minus one to very po various powers, it alternates in sign, positive, negative, positive, negative. And here we're changing the sign. And so this is the same as dn minus one 
plus minus one. I don't know if you can see it here. It says to the exponent n. So by changing the sign, uh, we are just moving to the next um, value of the sequence, which alternates between minus one and plus one. Okay, so now we can show the statement B for index N. The way we're gonna do it is use A. So from A, DN is N minus one times DN minus one plus N minus one times DN minus two. And there I distributed the factor of N minus one. Now we're going to substitute for n minus one dn minus two. And from above, we know that that equals dn minus one plus minus one to the n. And now we're gonna group the two terms that have dn minus one. We have n minus one of those here and one of those here. So we get n copies of dn minus one plus minus one to the n. And that's statement B for index n. And so we have now approved this induction on, um, we have improved that statement B is then true for all natural numbers n greater than or equal to two. All right, so that's all for today. And uh, next time we'll talk about the Catalan numbers.